Hi and welcome back or welcome to episode three of In Conversation with my name is Johnny Cooper and I have a staff member here in DCU. Over the next hour we're going to talk to two students, May from Communications and Rory from Accounting and Finance. I do hope you enjoy. How are you keeping? I'm good, I'm keeping good. I'm the same as anyone else I'd say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know it's been a challenge and we'll get into that maybe in a couple of moments as well. Um, so very loose, very informal. There's a few people joining us here as well. Uh, very loose, very informal. I guess just really try to find out about the course, uh, your journey, what you're doing in the course, outside the course. I know you're really active, um, which I, I know lots of people will be very interested in in terms of what you're doing outside the classroom as well as inside. So maybe let's start at the start then. Why DCU or a bit of background? Why DCU or your journey to DCU? Um, well, I think initially I was fairly on route to go to Maynooth University because um, both of my siblings had gone there before and um, I liked the look of the media course there. And then I said I'd go to the open day just with some friends. Um, I go to the DCU one and I don't know what it was, but I stepped on campus and I just felt like I was meant to go there. Like I just felt kind of at home already and I liked that it was big, but it wasn't too big I, I, I could navigate my way around and um when I looked into the communications course it was basically everything I wanted in a nutshell like and more things I didn't even realize that I was interested in until I started to like read the module descriptions and stuff like that um so yeah it was pretty much as simple as that like I stepped foot on campus one day and I fell in love with the place and I am still in love with it now <laughs> Do you know, I just want to pick up on one thing you said, because I was a student in DCU and I, I know where you're coming from and that that homely, that kind of wasn't too big, but it's not too small. It felt right. Um, tell us more, because lots of people do come to DCU and obviously people, the students there, they'll be slightly biased anyway. But tell us more, like why, how, why did it feel like kind of that or what sense did you get or was it something in particular? Was it the people, the place, a bit of everything? Um, well, I'm from Carlo originally, so... Um, very rural, very small, and I think I'd only been, the only universities I'd been to in Dublin before was UCD, which I find is just it's it's more complicated to navigate than the whole city of Dublin. I think like it just seems to be massive. Um, so I was really worried that when I got to DCU, it would it would feel like that as well, and I'd feel you know like a tiny dot in a million people. But I think it's just like there's something about the layout of the campus that it's all very close together. But at the same time, like you don't feel claustrophobic, like it's very, I don't know, there's something about the people as well. Like I remember just immediately anyone I met was so lovely and I talked to a few of the lecturers on at that open day and they all seemed so like engaging with students. And I think it just kind of completely got rid of any nerves I had and mm -hmm. I felt comfortable almost immediately. So I think that's probably it. Like in, it's, I just think it's the perfect size campus, the perfect amount of students that you never feel you know overwhelmed but also you could walk around campus and you'd see a billion people you've never seen before but you'll always see one person that you know hmm. so i think that's probably it could i ask you i want to ask about the course now in a second just in terms of what goes on inside the course because i'm sure there's people listening um, and again just to say if you do have a question pop it in i won't be saying out your name it's anonymous i can ask Maeve. Just that open day element, um, and this year it's a virtual one, I guess, in the current circumstance. Um, but just in terms of that open day opportunity, what did it provide you? Obviously, you got to speak to people in different ways. You got insights. But anything else? I mean, the open days, they were important for you. Would you recommend going to them and, and or, well, attending them, not going to them physically now, but uh, going to them anyway? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think I had a lot of um, preconceived ideas of what certain courses would be, and then um, talking to lectures really changed that for me. Like I um, originally wanted to do like journalism maybe, which is quite close to the course I'm doing. Um, and it was from talking to lecturers that I realized I didn't exactly know the type of journalism or type of media I wanted to go down. So communications was much broader and I hadn't even really known about that course. So I think just going to open days, the way they're often done is you're paired with similar courses. So you could hear about a course you never knew about before and it could be the one for you. And I think that's a really valuable part of the open days and obviously getting a feel for the campus, but I know that probably won't be the case this year. But I think getting to talk to lectures and often talking to students who are already in the course can give you a much better idea of what you're going to be studying than whatever you're going to read in like a prospectus. 
Yeah, no, and I fully agree. And just to maybe point out that there is open days, although they're virtual November 21st, uh, 20th and 21st this year, we'll have virtual campus tour. You'll be able to, as Maeve, Maeve said there, talk to students and so on. I'll tell you about that, a little bit more about that later on. Before maybe talk about communications, lots of people, and you you mentioned the briefly there as well, people are sort of torn or don't really understand fully maybe journalism, multimedia communication. So maybe let's just establish where communication sits and then we might talk a little bit about communications and the course and what goes on inside it. Yeah, so there's three um, courses within the School of Communications. There's journalism, multimedia and communication studies. So, um, well, from my perspective anyway, journalism is a much more narrow compared to communications. It's mm -hmm. you're going to you do the course and you're going to end up being a journalist of some sort, whether that be on a newspaper or radio or TV that way. Communications is a lot broader. It has about 60% theory and 40% practical. So you're doing modules that are close to social science. So you'll do like social studies, cultural studies, and that really gives you a good understanding of like the world you're kind of documenting. And then the practical side of things gives you the skills to document it. So we do like photography, audio production, uh, video production, uh, Photoshop, that kind of thing. And then multimedia is kind of the inverse of that, where you do about 60% practical and 40% theory. So we share a lot of modules with multimedia, um, but they have probably a little bit more of a hands-on approach when it comes to their practical things. And they're doing coding, building websites, video production, photography, everything we're doing as well. So it kind of, um, it depends what kind of learner you are, I think. If you're much more hands-on, maybe multimedia is for you. Um, I like the theory side of things. I think that it gives me a little bit more insight into like people and and um, even just like society and stuff like that. And then it's easier to write and create media concerning that. You mentioned journalism was something you had in your head. Was it a strong, was it a 50-50? Was it maybe just an idea? Where where does it sit in terms? Because people often come in, even to the last week or the last, I'll go with journalism and I'll go communication. So where did it sit for you or was it heavily weighted one side? Um, well, when I the first time we started to think about the CAO was probably when I was going into TY and I was picking my subjects uh, for fifth year and I picked like subjects to be a doctor I thought I was gonna go down that road I picked like biology and chemistry and then I realized I was watching too much Grey's Anatomy and I didn't want to be a doctor I wanted to like make tv shows like Grey's Anatomy so um I realized then that I was into media and I started writing for my school newspaper and stuff like that and I think for me the automatic thing to do was to be a journalist then um because I didn't really know what other options were there for me I didn't feel like I was going to be able to make movies or something just because I felt like I was from a very rural place and that seemed too far of a dream <laughs> but um it was when I went to the, the open days and heard about journalism and communications I think I realized that you know there is such a good media base in Ireland and um the only route isn't just to write for the Irish Times like there are other things and that's what I got from communication that I could go and make music videos or I could make films, Irish films. And and once I realized that those kind of things were an option for me, um, journalism kind of got put to the side, I think. And that's when I realized communication was the one for me. So I guess maybe what you say, what about your experience anyway, you know, going to open days, talking to people, obviously doing your research and so on and there's plenty of opportunities to do that so for those listening we have lots of different ways of getting in touch and i'll mention these later on again there's blogs and there's podcasts and there's live oh, sessions sorry. and there's these every week and so on so okay a little bit about i guess coming into the course your journalism versus uh communications kind of dilemma you're sitting inside the course now so there's a couple of people watching what happens in, as in modules i mean hours a week do you have exams assignments give us a sense of what happens inside the course yeah well it's it's um, we don't have that many contact hours in communications. Um, you have four modules each semester and usually there'll be one or two exams and then the other ones will be essays um, for your final project. But there's a lot of CA, or which is continuous assessment. So a big part, a big thing you learn in communications is like how to work with other people, how to work in groups, because that's something you're going to have to do when you get into the industry. So we would have... Um, weekly presentations sometimes or maybe a, a big presentation per semester depending on the module you're doing and um, yeah you really get to learn like 
how to work with other people and how to um, bounce ideas off people and um, then create projects together. So it's a really like collaborative course. But then of course there's things you have to do on your own, like write your essays, do your exams. Um, but like I said before, it's really broad. So usually no matter what the module, you can tailor whatever you're doing to something you are comfortable with or something you're interested in. So it's never really, even if it's a module that you maybe don't find that interesting, um, you never find it boring because you can tailor it to what you like yourself or what you know. Um, and then personally, I just live for the practical stuff. Um, I love the photography, videography. Um, it gave me a love for audio production, which I wasn't expecting. I think um, I went into communications thinking I was going to end up on TV, which is not what I want to do anymore. But um, it gave me a love for audio editing. And then I ended up running the radio station on campus last year through one of the societies. So I, I do definitely want to talk about outside the classroom. So I will do that in a moment. Uh, you did mention a lot of them there in terms of your own passions and getting involved. Other facilities on campus, what do you what can you engage with or what do you engage with as a comm student? Um, well, one of the best things for with students in the School of Communications, not just communication studies, um, we have access to Mac Labs. So they're just rooms full of Apple Macs, but they have all the softwares that you could ever dream of as a comm student. Um, Photoshop, Adobe Premiere Pro for making videos, podcasts, um, animation, anything that you would want to use. Those uh, softwares can be quite expensive for students to have on their own. So um, we get to go to the computer labs anytime you want, really, as long as there's not a class on. So when you go in the evening times, you find people working on their own projects, which is really fun because you get to take the skills you're learning through the weeks and then make your own things in your free time. And you can also go on the weekends. There's also a TV studio in the Henry Grattan building on campus and two podcasting studios. So they're really cool once you get your hands on them as well. And you get to see really state-of-the-art equipment. Um, we also have loans, so you can borrow uh, cameras, DSLRs, like proper video production cameras, um, microphones, anything, anything you could ever need, really. <laughs> I, I do want to go into, as I said, outside the classroom, but just a quick question came in um, just around, and, and you might have an insight from your own journey here, but just around careers. Uh, well, the question was actually, is there a safe career to come after communication? But maybe can you speak to that in terms of options or, or maybe that, that question in particular? Well, I think um, one thing, it depends how you look at it. In one way, it's really good that you come into communications. For me, I didn't know where I wanted to end up. So as a course like nursing, where you go in knowing you're gonna be a nurse at the end was terrifying for me because I didn't know what I wanted. That's why I really enjoy how broad communication studies is because every single day we seem to hear a new career that we could end up in. Um, but there's so many options. Like if you're into the practical kind of things, you could end up working in podcasting for a newspaper, like you can still go down the road of journalism if you realize that is something you want. Uh, TV production, film, but then also we learn a lot about advertising, marketing, you could go into public relations, like it really kind of caters to anything in the realm of media and even further than media, um, you could go into business, like there's a lot of, lot of options, um, which is scary too, because now I don't know what I'm gonna do and I'm graduating very soon. <laughs> To that person asked the question, I hope that answered. If not, come back with a follow up and we, we can talk a little bit more about it. Uh, time is flying and I do want to absolutely cover outside of the classroom as well. And just a reminder to the others, uh, there is a question and answer uh, function on your screen. Uh, feel free to ask a question. May no doubt will help us out. So outside of the classroom and look, we only have a few minutes, so you'll have to keep it short because I know you're incredibly busy. Give us a sense. What's going on? What do you get up to outside the classroom? Um, well, I think societies in general are the reason I love college as much as I do. And I've ne I don't know another university that does societies as well as UCU does. I think the college itself puts so much time and effort into helping societies thrive. I am the chairperson of the Media Production Society this year, which is insane um, to me because I started as a first year watching and being in the society and thinking it was the most amazing thing in the world. And I still obviously think that, but it's funny now that it's in my hands. But um, yeah, last year I was a manager of the radio station on campus, which is through the Media Production Society. Um, and basically anybody can come in and do a radio show and, and you get to use industry standard equipment, 
microphones like the one you have there <laughs> which is falling down <laughs> but, low. Um, yeah so you get to come and we make films we make a uh, podcast everything and, it, and it's it's doing all the things you're doing and of course like communications but doing them for fun rather than for an assignment and doing them with as much creative freedom as you want um there's a lot of other societies i'm involved in as well like uh, rag the raising and giving society and we volunteer we play football with kids every week and um, do homework clubs with people in the community and there's a billion societies and ways to get involved um and if there's not a society that you like yeah. you can set up your own and i think that's one of the best things about dcu yeah you do hear an awful lot about and anyone that's watched the last two episodes we i think to to a person every ambassador or every student that's been talking to me has been um so vocal around what happens outside the classroom and obviously you get to pursue and get to enjoy and get to travel and do different things but also i guess on a personal development as you mentioned there as well you're chairperson chairperson of the media production society which is which is a massive society in dc and does lots of fantastic work so in terms of personal growth and development and your network and, and various other things that 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 um that that goes on i guess it, it's important a student ambassador does what and what's involved there a student ambassador um we basically are part of the recruitment team in terms of showing prospective students and and people still in secondary school um what they can do we're living examples of what students are and i think um we try to be as good as we can in that regard um and give you it not just a, a biased opinion and say dc is the best place in the world but an honest one and because the last thing any of us want is for someone to come here and not be happy either. So um, our job is to just show you an honest review of what college is like for us and hope that it's something that you want to follow, I guess. Just want to reverse a tiny bit because that person has had a quick follow up with regards to career mm -hmm. possibility. And the question was around, is it worth um well actually just it's two questions but the first one is is it worth doing a master's or would you need to do a master's after the program maybe it depends but anything on that i think it does depend on what kind of stream you want to go down later on there's a really good master's in public relations in dcu and um there's one in video and radio production as well if that's something that you want to follow but i know a lot of people who've graduated this year gone and the year before who didn't need one and they're now doing amazing things so i think um, it's a personal preference. I don't think you need one to do well afterwards, but if it's something you're interested in, you want to learn more, then those opportunities are there for you as well. The second part, and then I just want to ask you one or two more things about outside the classroom. The second part of his question, it's a slightly different area, but is it difficult to pick up on the practical side of things, such as video production or animation, if you have no prior knowledge? Well, I had absolutely no prior knowledge, and now I am, well, I'm not going to brag and say in class because I'm not, but um, that they start from square one and that's the point, like college isn't a test, it's teaching, they're teaching you how to do everything. So they assume that you have absolutely no knowledge and um, build from there. But I think if, if that is something you're worried about, something like the Media Production Society helped me an, an amazing amount to the point where I'm now going into classes I have video production this semester actually and I'm going into classes already knowing the things that they're teaching me and then I have that advantage over some of the other students who wouldn't get involved that way so I definitely wouldn't let it deter you if it's a course you're interested in and um, because there's a million supports to help you if you do end up struggling down the line. I do want to get to the quick fire round because every uh, student that comes on is doing our three question quick fire round and that's coming up in a minute as well but I did want to ask about I'm asking kind of everybody the same question when you're looking back or now that you're looking back and you mentioned you had another university potentially that you're going to go to any advice you'd give yourself any kind of tips or tricks people that are maybe listening that are where you are I'm not too sure or maybe are sure and haven't what, what would you give what information would you give yourself um I think like for me I was coming to DCU thinking I had um, a lot of friends coming with me from home and then whatever way the CA worked out, I ended up being the only person coming. And I think that was actually really good for me in the sense that I didn't rely on friends and I had to go find new ones. So I think um, one piece of advice I'd give someone or myself then is don't, well, obviously stay with your friends if you can, but don't go somewhere just because that's where your friends are going. I think you'll learn and you'll grow a lot more if you have to go outside your comfort zone a little bit. So obviously it's a good thing to have supports, but um, I think for me, 
I wouldn't have realized it then, but I think it's such a good thing that I came on my own because I would have probably, you know, stayed with my group that were meant to come with me and um, I probably wouldn't have, I wouldn't be who I am now. I wouldn't be where I am now in college either. So the, the, that, that thought is consistent with lots of people coming from uh, in and outside of Dublin, but coming on their own. But I guess maybe just to point out there's so many different support networks, be it student support and development, be it clubs and societies, be it in the course itself, tutors and um, people in second, third and fourth year. Sometimes you're assigned um, mentors, depending on the program. So there is plenty of different, I guess, links there that if you are a little bit apprehensive or nervous or coming from afar um, beyond Dublin or beyond Carlow or Galway, wherever it might be. Um, I guess there is that there. One or two more minutes before I jump into the quick. There is a time for questions of anybody. Thanks to that person that asked those couple of questions. And um, there's a couple more minutes to go. Um, so what else have you missed? You, you've you've decided DCU is where you want to go, even though you weren't quite sure at the time. You came to DCU in the end, you know, uh, the the chairperson, chairperson, is it? Of MPS, yeah. which is, is it the biggest society? One of the biggest societies? I'll say it is. <laughs> I'll say it is too. It's certainly extremely active um, and it's extremely popular and it does lots and lots of great work. So so now to sit, what's next? What do you have in your head? What's after the program or what's coming down the track? Um, I don't know. That's a very scary question, Johnny. Um, but I think just whatever way my time in college has gone, I have keep ending up in things like podcasts and things making things like that. So I think um I found a love for editing and audio and I think I'll probably end up something like that. I thought I wanted to be on the radio when I started here first, but I don't think I want that either. Um, but I think I can already see like the next, the modules I'm doing now and the ones out next semester, I feel like by the time I get to graduation, I will know hopefully and I'll have something set. But um, yeah, that's a terrifying question. <laughs> It is. Sorry to put you on the spot. There was somebody asking a moment ago as well. Um, we're nearly out of time, but there is time if you do have any last minute questions just to uh, pop them in. It's anonymous and I'll, I'll, you can ask uh, May before we go. We might as well do the quick fire round because um, um, it's here sitting in front of me and I have my six questions. So as always, the first person gets to choose. You have three questions and then I'll give Rory in a few minutes the next three. So which out of one, one to six, what three questions do you want? Okay, I'll take... I just pick numbers, is it? Pick numbers, yeah. Three, four, and six. Three, four, and six, okay. Uh, true or false, first one. True or false, DCU has um, three different social media takeovers each and every week. True. True, ding, ding. Well done. <laughs> Sinead McCron, who's listening, is going to be very happy that you knew that. What else? Yeah. Number four. Um, DCU was the first, true or false, DCU was the first third level institution in Ireland to reward extracurricular activities via our uni, uni module. That's true. That is also true. So outside the classroom, it's not just inside the classroom for those that don't know what it is. Inside the classroom, you get marks, you do your assignments and tests, but also outside the classroom, uh, just like Maeve is doing in her MPS and her social uh, and her society work, she also can get marks towards her program. Last question. Uh, hopefully you know this one because it's in your kind of sphere but you might the Helix is home to many DCU events on our Glass Nevin campus including graduations careers events concerts and much more but what is the capacity of the Mahoney Hall so we have two options is it 901 or 1070 I'm going to go 1070 well done done the research that's three out of three well done <laughs> you are in the joint no you're not in the lead actually you're a joint with uh, I think it's Gary and Sarah from psychology last week so okay. There you go. Well done. Three out of three. Um, if Precious there is any, on Rory now. <laughs> Precious on Rory, who, uh, who I can see him. He just came into the room there, which I'll get him in the moment. Um, so if you do have any last minute questions, uh, let us know. We have about one minute left or maybe a little bit less. Less. Let us know. I just want to remind people that there's loads and loads of ways to get in touch. So obviously we're here talking to Maeve in a live conversation. But if you go online, there, as I mentioned earlier on, there's blogs, podcasts, there's opportunities to watch uh, taster lectures and much more. And don't forget our open days are coming up November 20th and 21st. Everything that may mentioned in terms of talking to students, lecturers, getting to see the campus, uh, talking to people in programs, etc., will all be available to you. It's on Friday and Saturday. So if there is no last minute questions, I'll give it another couple of seconds. Um, but if there's no last minute questions, Maeve, thank you very much for your insights and for your time. It's very much appreciated. Thank you for having me, Johnny. No problem at all. You stay safe and we will hopefully see you uh, very, very soon. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. See you later.
So joining us now is Rory from Accounting and Finance, who will give us a sense of his journey to DCU and also what he gets up to inside the program. I hope you enjoy. It is an opportunity, a great opportunity for me to mention some of the other ways that you can get in touch. So we are here every every Wednesday from four to five doing these live conversation course spotlight sessions. Uh, we just spoke to Mo- Maeve a minute ago from uh, communication and Rory, uh, aside from his technical difficulties, will join us now in just a couple of moments time. But uh, sitting right now online after this call or whenever you do wish to, to maybe go on, have a look, you can go on to undergraduate course presentation. So you can view any course that we have in DCU and you can see what that course is all about in video format. We also have academic taster lectures. So if you want to see what a lecture might be like, so what it might feel like, what it might say, sound like what might be in one of your programs you can see what's what some of them uh, academic taste of lectures are like we have student perspectives so we have students uh, that that do videos on their course to tell you exactly what rory is going to do for us now in a couple of minutes exactly all about their courses we have information on sports what sports is all about both facilities scholarships we have an online interactive prospectus we have as i mentioned social media takeovers a few minutes ago a few minutes ago virtual campus tours and much much more so i see rory coming back into the room I'm going to try bring him in to see if technology will will play with play properly with what we're doing. There you go. There we go. We can't beat the old phone. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's fun. That's great. We're starting off now. Uh, we, we we might go back to no cameras though. <laughs> we can stop. Come on. I don't think the green screen look like you do, but come on. Yeah. Well. This is one of them, for those that are listening, this is one of them where I can, you know, pretty much just wind Rory up and take my camera off and he'll, I'll see you on the other side. So you'll get a sense of that now in the next few minutes. Um, <laughs> how, first of all, how are you keeping? Yeah, not too bad. Making the most now of hopefully the bit of time off. And uh, But yeah, it's been good so far. I've been enjoying college so far. I'm enjoying it. Very good. We're going to get into, actually, Mike, because we didn't get a massive chance to maybe ask Maeve about what's different in the current circumstance. So we might get into a little bit about just the online learning and your experience and just in general, what college has been like uh, with regards to the way it's situated at the moment. Um, but just like I started with uh, Maeve, I might just start with just So why DCU? Was it always something you wanted to, in terms of place you wanted to go? I had the course you wanted to do. Was it somewhere else you had in your mind? Tell me about coming to DCU initially. Yeah, so pretty much. So the original decision was I wanted to go into business. I knew I wanted to do some business. It was my favorite subject at school was leaving Sir Business and leaving Sir Accounting. But I wasn't too sure if I committed to the accounting yet. But through a lot of research, I did find out if you want to go into business, you're going to need at least something in accounting, really. It's hard to escape, to be honest with you. Now. You're going to eventually have to do it. And I know it's a misery works to a lot of people. But my attitude was I'm just going to go after. I'm going to try and get good and I end up like when I was in leaving cert this was I really started to like actually enjoy it because accounting is very much if you get over the hump with it it really starts to click in place and you find out it actually isn't all that bad so uh yeah so pretty much when I was looking at courses DC accounting and finance was it was pretty much where my points were like I, I wanted to go for a course that I felt like was like for my max potential and when I found this course it gave the exemptions I was looking for I'm sure we'll get into that later because that's such a big part of the course, but um, it gave the exemptions I was looking for. It was three years, but the employability of the graduates coming out of this course was huge. And that's really what I was looking for. And talking to a lot of people who I knew as well, who had gone down similar paths. If there was anything people who hadn't done accounting had said, it was, I wish I'd done it earlier so that where I am now, I'd have a bit, like, a bit better of an understanding of it. So I said, I'm going to try, just get ahead of it and do it early. Lots of people, I guess, pick up their information in all sorts, be it online, be it open days, be it maybe knowing someone or even a family member going to DCU. How did you get the information that you needed or anything that you didn't know? How did you get it? So I'm pretty lucky. I'm pretty close to Dublin. I'm, I'm literally in Dunboyne, which is on the border. So I had the open days as being my main source of information. So uh, if you do have the opportunity, please do try. I know we obviously had this year, but do try getting to those open days because I remember asking, I was actually between aviation as well because it's where my dad works. So um it's a brilliant course, actually, DC, the aviation management. So it really came down to a kind of a coin flip almost between accounting and finance and aviation management. But going to the open days, I got the information I needed on both. And there's really, guys, as many people as you can talk to from courses. So uh, I know DC, its website is brilliant. There's uh, the uni buddy profiles as well. There's all stuff you, like, you'd be able to find out more on uh, student help at DCU. And that's really, I just made, made the most of the information available to me and that's what you have to do. If you want to be, make it feel like you've made the right choice with your course, you have to get all the right information. So 
definitely get your information as much as you can from trusted sources. Try to avoid as much of your friends saying, I'm doing this, you should do it too. It's not the ideal way to pick a coach, definitely, yeah. Yeah, maybe just to follow up on that briefly. Well, two points actually. Um, follow up on that briefly. I know my colleague Sinead McGowan is listening, and there's so much thing, so much information that's online, be it social media and everything else that is there at the moment. So we're trying our best from a DCU point of view, trying our best to make sure that's all at everybody's fingertips, as I mentioned a moment ago. And the second thing is, as we're gonna we're gonna get into the course now, as we're chatting, if you have a question, it's anonymous, you can throw it in on the QA function. I'll get 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 to it, I'll see it, and I can ask Rory then directly. So Accounting and finance, you're in an elevator. Give us your elevator pitch. What happens inside accounting and finance and uh, maybe some of the modules? A bit about it first. How many floors have we got? Right, so <laughs> uh, uh, pretty much you're starting off, it's a three-year course. So a lot of people will look at the three years and think that might be a disadvantage. It's a huge advantage to the course. You're getting in quick, you get out quick, and the stuff you're learning in between. So year one, they start everything from the ground up. A lot of people, and it's a very standard question is, do I have to have already done accounting before? And the answer is no. In fact, the guy in my year who came first actually didn't have a accounting background from leagues or he just came straight into the course. And they granted this guy's a brain box, he's a genius, but it does go to show. You put in the bit of work and you will get through fine without having done accounting previously. So uh, basically, yeah, year one, you start off from scratch. So you're doing a bit of economics. It's a little bit of law, uh, obviously your main accounting modules. Uh, but really, year one, not too bad. You get a flavor of everything and that gets developed through the course. You're never, exp- there's never too much expected of you, really. If you, pu- if you put in the work, you go to your lectures, you take your notes, you'll be fine. So year two, they get into more of the finance side and the finance side is tricky, but it's really, really enjoyable to learn about because it is what pretty much, you know, like why you see all these guys Waffle Wall Street, stuff like that. That is, well, probably a more traumatic size, but it is finance. That's what they're doing. It is what they are doing with the stocks and so on and um Make it sound like I really have no idea what I'm talking about, but I always have afraid that you know, I don't have the ability to go into half detail. I'll either give this or I'll give everything. <laughs> but uh, uh, so again, it's more the finance side, and you're advancing accounting on. You're learning about new accounting standards. So I'm not, if anyone here is doing leaving cert accounting, what you're doing when you're doing the workings under question one, you're actually learning how to do accounting standards. You just don't actually know it yet. When you come into the course, they'll teach you all about what the kind of background is to what you're doing there. The back, that's pretty much a simplified basis of what you're going to continue. Again, it does help, but absolutely not required. Uh, year three is where you specialize. You get to pick between economics, um, management, accounting, and there's one other that's escaping me. But if you want that cap one exemption, you're going to have to do the accounting. So, But at that choice as well it doesn't really limit you because right now I am doing economics. I am doing a law module as well. And through the other options that you get, you do get the option to do a management style course as well. I know there is an intro to HR in there as well. So a lot of flexibility throughout the course of people, when they hear accounting and finance, they will think that they're pigeonholed into it. Yes, the accounting and finance is a big side of it, but you will be picking up loads of other skills along the way. And that's a big reason why this course is so employable. It's because of these skills you're picking up as well as the accounting. The, the um, sometimes, like, some, some people like to know class sizes. Class size, uh, 120. So you will, that's our kind of base course will be accounting and finance 120. In first year, you will have a lot of courses uh, in with you. So I know why intro to macroeconomics and that has, oh, maybe like 400, I think in it. Actually, it could be even be more. They actually have to divide that up and that's in one of the big, big lecture halls. And that's just because so many different courses do intro to uh, economics. So you will have big class sizes like that. But as far as your course goes, it's 120. And a lot of the time it will only be that 120 you're with. In, in terms of, and this is slightly aside from the course, but it's important as well, coming into the program, or certainly from your experience, so you're coming from not too far away, but but Dunboyne, but not too far away, but coming from um, outside of Dublin, I guess, technically, you're coming into a program that has 120 people in it, maybe you knew someone that was there. How do you settle in? This is maybe a general question, but how do you settle in? What happens? What goes on the first week or two, et cetera? Uh, the best advice I, it is kind of corny but do stay true to yourself because if you are yourself you're going to meet like-minded people with you so I know in my course uh, everyone kind of found their groups fast it felt like in the first few days and that could be kind of like it could it kind of sound nervous that if you don't get like so-called a group you'll be in trouble and you'll be on your own for the three years it really really isn't like that at all and the more people you talk to in college as well it, I don't even know how to describe it because I know like, one of my best friends in college now David it's literally, I just sat down beside him at the orientation day. We got talking, we got talking about where we're from, what we did in the leaving cert, the whole lot. 
then we had a few more orientation events. So I just, you know, sat beside David. And yeah, there we one of my best mates in college. So, you know, we were meant to go on holidays, but that got cancelled. Uh, and also, pretty funny that there was a guy who was in my secondary school who I actually was good friends with. I didn't even know he was in the course until like two weeks in because he just hadn't been in at all because I think he was sick or something. So when he showed up as well, it was nice. And then I was like, yep, this is David. And from there, we've kind of just gone to know a lot of people in the course. So yeah, that's, I'm not sure if that's the good answer or not, but they just pick someone and sit beside them. But that's why it is. <laughs> no, I just was it because some people, uh, I guess, find it anxious and daunting and, and naturally enough, it's a new place and it's a new experience, but I was just interested. So, oh, I was terrified. Yeah, it, it's, 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 it feels so scary, but you have to remember everyone is the exact same because it's easy to point out the two people who already know each other. But if you look around, you see another hundred odd who don't have don't, don't know anyone. They're all sitting there and looking at each other, all awkward. So yeah, everyone's the same boat as you. Not to worry. So you mentioned, and we're sort of jumping up and down and left to right here. But I think the flow. So you mentioned a little bit around the course structure, what goes on, uh, class sizes we were talking about there, kind of settling in, etc. A bit about the exemptions. What else did you or would be useful for those listening that you know now that maybe didn't know when you're coming into the program, or was there anything around the, about the program itself? About the program itself, uh, I actually didn't realize just kind of how much you're getting prepared to go to work. It feels like a strange thing to say because you do get it. You do get a degree to go off and then hopefully find a job with that degree. But from day one, you were really being trained into almost like a position in an accountancy because you're being taught the skills. And there isn't I found in a lot of places there's a disconnect between you learn this, but where do I use it? This whole course is anything you learn, you will use at some point. And that's something that's, it definitely motivates you to learn because it is tough. If you're learning something that you don't think you'll ever use, you're not going to put yourself really into it. So when every step of the way, there's a firm, KPMG are work very closely with the course as well as the other big four, Deloitte, PwC, EY. And they will, they love to point out, we love when students score high in this module. It's a good indicator of that's something that they would be doing on a daily basis here. Um, I, obviously the accounting is a big part but even simple things like communications and psychology little things that you know it might you might look at it and say i signed up for accounting not communication psychology but they are huge skill sets to kind of add to your uh, yourself as an employee it's almost like your employee cv of like the how well can you fit into a position and yeah that's definitely something i said i probably wish i knew in first year more because in second year i've definitely felt it it's that no one first year everything you learn has a purpose whether it's you're going to use it again second and third year or if it's actually something that's going to be part of your job the it is actually the the big one for that learning your, yourself a bit of it getting familiar with it so yeah definitely wish i knew more about that yeah i just want to remind people we have 15 minutes left or so maybe a little bit more if you have a question you want to know something they are anonymous uh throw it in the q a box and i can ask rory so um please do do that if you want to know something a little bit more you hear something you like or you're just not quite sure of so we have in dcu three academic campuses all have those same paths st patrick's from conjure and a glass nevin campus and um, you do a lot of your work on the glass nevin campus uh, yeah, I'm 100% on uh, Glasnevin. As most of the business faculty will, you'll, you'll tend to be based on Glasnevin, which I like. You know, there's a lot around the campus. It's a, it's a nice campus. I enjoy it, yeah. For those that are unfamiliar, or maybe they are familiar, just don't really know, what else, though, aside from academics, academics is obviously important, where you're doing your um, your study and learning and developing and so on academically. But what, what else is on the Glasnevin campus facility-wise? What can you do? What do you do? Oh, okay, so pretty much on I'm I own DCU because it is a bit of a commute for me that I if I go out, I'll probably look this is why I got involved in clubs and societies. I want to spend the day out there. So I kind of spend a lot of time in the restaurant. <laughs> they do a, a carvery. It's roast beef Thursday. It's five euro roast beef carvery dinner. I hope I I hope they bring that back because that was just the highlight of every Thursday. I mean, you have to get there early too. It went fast. Everyone knew about it. Uh, where, but mainly about the campus facilities. The hidden cafes are so cool. There's cafes everywhere in DCU. And I am literally in the, like in third year still finding out about more cafes that I never knew about. So um, I spend a lot of my time on campus. I'll be going between the U is brilliant. It's just so like, it's just such a great communal space. Sit around with your friends, catch up between lectures. And it does actually help for lectures if you're talking with your friends about kind of projects and stuff like that. Because I find if I have an essay that I haven't even started, and I'm talking to my friends about it. I'll actually almost explain what I should be doing for it. So then when I actually sit down to go do it, I've already actually been talking about it. But the year is where I spend a lot of my time, definitely. So between there, getting a bite in the restaurants, getting a coffee in one of the many, many, many cafes for a DCU, or up in the library. The library is fantastic. I, I've seen other colleges' libraries, and I have to say, I would 
never trade in that DC library for anything. It is like unbelievable. You've everything there. You can rent out laptops. I know a guy, he has not brought a laptop. This is not advisable. Do if you have a laptop, bring it with you. But he just doesn't bring a laptop in with him. He's constantly rent to get the library ones. It works out brilliant for him. And there's a mentoring suite down the back where we can always work on our group projects together. Pretty much anything you can think of that you would need, DCU provides it there. And obviously, I'm sure we'll get into the clubs and socks about the sport campuses, the one and same players down the road from Glasnevin. And yeah, really, between a whole day in DCU, I will be all over the campus and I love it. I, I definitely will get into clubs and side. I just want to park that for a moment. I just want to maybe touch on, and just again, a reminder um, that you can ask the question if you want. It's anonymous. Um, it's on the screen, the Q&A function. I want to ask you maybe about, so it's week, is it week two of 10 or is it week three of DCU? We are week three, week three, yes. But if you don't know, we're, we're, we're week three, okay. Um, so obviously in a couple of weeks, right now as we're currently sitting um, with regards to COVID and everything else, it's a little bit different with online learning. Your experience the last couple of weeks, and even at the end of last semester, I think you might have had a little bit of it as well with regards initially when COVID hit and lockdown and so on. So your experience in general, how have you got on? How has DCU accommodated uh, students? What was your experience been like? Yeah, I mean, it's I can't imagine what it's like for lectures, especially I have two lecturers who were pretty close to time, but they're in their 60s. Like, and, uh, to, for the depth, like the how quickly they adapted to it was phenomenal because they just had everything up on the slides, all the notes, they were recording lectures straight away. So especially with how quick everything happened last semester, because I feel like it's almost like it's so long ago now, but it literally happened overnight that everything just got locked down. All of a sudden, everything's getting moved to online and with how quickly they responded. I was going into exams that, you know, they, the summer exams were definitely the big ones for accounting and finance. As I was assuming for most courses, because you're getting all your year long modules getting examined there. So it was really nerve wracking, but like the exams were fair. One mod, uh, one um, lecture, John Nolan, he made the exam like perfect. It tested your ability. It wasn't too long, wasn't too short. And it was a really good, considering this was like, he had a total other plan for an exam that we we're obviously going to be sitting in person. How quickly he got up a new kind of coursework and how he was going to grade it. It was really just, we everyone in the course made note of that was, really impressive how quickly you turned it around so moving on though to the start of this semester it really has been it almost it is kind of weird because it does feel like i'm not actually you know it doesn't feel like anything's changed because despite me being on campus so often the principle stays the same your lectures are going to be doing their lectures they're going to have notes on up after you do your tutorial questions and you kind of move through your day it is a little bit tougher because i would love to be on the campus getting to see my friends getting those kind of mini breaks in between the lectures is something that you that is probably the best part of dcu it's just the little things like that but i am liking it i'm getting like the education which is obviously number one so so far so far so good anyway for me definitely yeah and just maybe to highlight and i know schools all over the country have different systems so on the dcu has what we call the dcu loop system which is effectively a one-stop shop where your lecture notes will be where there's videos whether there's where there's further reading those quizzes for the first years that that just came in there a couple of weeks ago it was there's been like an online um a communal place where they can meet and get to know people from their area and various different things so there is i guess a central place it's not just you know each faculty reach course doing their own thing is very much a coordinated from the very top down approach and i just thought i'd touch on that because i guess people might be interested just in, in that aspect hopefully we'll be you know out of that as soon as possible and safe to do so but i think it's worth mentioning uh, so we have about 10 minutes left and again just a reminder if you have a question you heard something you want to know more about or you just want to ask something that hasn't come up yet please do that and um, there is a q a function and it's anonymous i want to because outside the classroom like at everyone that I'm speaking to every week here outside the classroom is so big with regards what people do. And we've touched on, and you'll probably touch on this anyway, but we've touched on the personal development. You can join things that you're interested in. You can try something totally new just to see what it's like and, and develop and network and so on. So just in terms of your journey, what happens outside the classroom? What do you get up to? What do you get from it? Uh, has it been beneficial meeting people and so on? Give us a sense of that. Yeah, so pretty much outside the classroom, clubs and societies is a big part of it. Uh, just on the regular day to day, uh, the events kind of like the DCU has the, um, I think they call it devotion now, the party in New Bar every Tuesday. That's a great way to get out and meet new people as well. I know a lot of the courses for their night out will organize. Sorry, am I going uh, off there, Johnny, just because nope. something popped up on my phone? Oh, cool, great. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, before I was in a meeting, and so an email popped up, but I just don't could hear me for an hour. <laughs> but um, yeah. Pretty much uh, those are a brilliant way they're a great way that 
they will have um someone in, a student who's kind of like I think it's a course lead or something course chair maybe oh no course chair is Orla I can't remember what the it's pretty much a student who takes charge of the course uh representative sorry that's the word of club that's, that's <laughs> totally right. dumped out there on it <laughs> uh and they would usually organize a class night out and it's great when you have kind of your maybe two three friends who you've been hanging out to, with for orientation to then go on a few nights out with them there it's on the campus usually finishes up around like you know half 11 12 so it isn't even too late and you get a few drinks get to meet other people in the course other people in dcu and uh for now we've mainly just been doing kind of video calls and um yeah, it's been good. There is a good sense of community in DCU. It's like you said, they're following on. Like, it's actually pretty impressive how they've done it because despite being all online, they've still managed to have people from different courses, different societies, all talking to each other. Especially, I like the idea that they did it by area as well. So hopefully everyone does get to meet each other in person. But um, DCU does do a lot for its community and making sure the students do feel happy and do enjoy themselves. That is a big thing to DCU. And it's evident in the way they... Uh, carry themselves and put their uh, interest into students definitely so uh, again just to remind people that maybe not familiar we have a dcu students union and there is um full-time employees of dcu that essentially look after the students with regards to things that are going on inside the classroom challenges finance we have a totally different unit called the student sport and development unit which look after student cohort with regards to changing courses and a few a few other elements that they will do well-being and so on so just to bear that in mind for those listening that if there is something happening outside the classroom there is so many touch points it's not just here here's the 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 course and we'll see you you know in a couple of months or whatever it might be there's so much support and 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 elements that that are there just a reminder there's a couple of minutes left i say we have maybe six or seven minutes left if you have a question uh, please do pop it in about the course or not um i'll, I'll happily ask Roy. looking back um and i'm kind of asking this in a different way to everybody but but i but i think it's um sometimes you uncover a bit of magic looking back what advice would you give yourself now reflecting on where you're sitting now versus maybe where you were um a couple of years ago what advice if any for yourself Total lectures like i mean it sounds so <laughs> stupid but like when you go from being everyone telling you to do your work to now no one tells you to go anywhere, you can do what you want. The first set of exams I did in DC were the toughest thing I've done in my life. I was pretty much, I was thinking, let's go out to go. And yeah, it was, you, know, you, you gotta put in the work, you've gotta go to your lectures. And you will have time outside of that. It's not like you just do one thing. Go to your lectures, enjoy your lectures because come, December, come January, come the end of the year, it'll make your life 10 times easier. So do remind yourself that even though no one's asking you to do the work, you still kind of got to do it because it is, there is a massive, I know I'm not the only one because everyone who I talked to felt it in January that, oh, well, we should have been doing this the whole time just because no one was telling us to do it, we probably should have done it. On a more lighter note, I definitely would tell myself get more involved earlier because I waited until maybe my second semester of year one to actually start to even properly look at the societies. Like I... I was one of these guys I came into DCU, did like a lecture or two and headed home. And I was, I was really like, I don't see why people rave about this college thing. It isn't actually even that great. As soon as I started getting involved and started getting more engaged with DCU, I said, this is like some of the best years of my life. I'm like, since getting involved, I've loved every minute of it. I'm, me- I'm raging now. I'm missing campus for my final year for the first semester anyway. And it is something that I definitely would tell myself is you have such a limited time in college make the absolute most of it yeah it's it's powerful advice and it's, it's so simple in many ways but often uh, and again i'm speaking to not only talking to people like yourselves but having gone through dcu myself a number of years ago you, you do kind of look back with uh i guess that making the most of it sometimes you did and sometimes you didn't but 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 i guess it's so apt if you do have any last minute questions do pop them in um it was about three or four minutes maybe left i just want to remind people that today is obviously a short snapshot of rory and what he's doing and accountancy and finance we're here the whole time to help so i mentioned all the different outlets earlier on but we also have a student help at dcu.e email you'll get us in that anytime i know rory and his colleagues as in the student ambassador team which i just want to mention and finish with that in a second um often help out people regards talking to them over emails at open days and a few other things so look we're here to help in many ways student ambassador team you're part of it um a strong part of it one of the leaders i must say maybe a social leader <laughs> in many aspects what what, what role i asked Maeve as well what, what role did they do on your experience with that particular aspect in, in, in dcu so far 
What was the role? Sorry, what was that, Johnny? What, what role did it carry out, I guess? What did the student ambassador team do? Oh, the student ambassador. So we do everything for DCU. We are the front workers of DCU. Though. We uh, we love to, we pretty much represent our course, first of all. We're an information outlet. We are literally doing the course right now. So for any prospective students, if you have any questions for us, it's what we're here to do. And we love to answer them. People like the reason you become a student ambassador is because you like to talk about your course. So never ever feel kind of awkward to ask a student ambassador. We actually do love it. We love when people ask us questions. So if you do have anything, please do ask away. And uh, also we just kind of do like help out on the orientation days and we do the bits in between to help DCU get along. We love to help. It's what we do. It's why we applied for the position. So yeah, I've, it's pretty bad. I mean, there's so much in it. I don't think we've enough time that I could go through every each individual student ambassador job. <laughs> no, I, I wanted to. I wanted to do it for two reasons. One was to acknowledge and highlight the work that you do outside the classroom. You help so many, uh, as do your colleagues, and the ambassador help so many prospective students. But number two, just to let people know that it's a, it's an active and it's an ongoing. I guess touch point that we have we realize that people that might be interested in coming to dcu want to talk to dcu students and i guess they are there and they're on hand so we have um i will just remind you there's about two or three minutes left you have a question and um, we'll, we can get to it in the next couple of minutes but we do have our quick fire question round which is very important and probably the most important aspect of our 30 minute conversation so Maeve just to remind you Rory got three out of three if you weren't oh, listening remind me I was here for and she was firing <laughs> through it <laughs> she, she knew them so she picked three four and six so you get one two and five so you don't have any choice or any option I'm confident you'll get these I'm confident now with a man of your um, knowledge of DCU you'll get these so so th this one's an easy one to start, okay? The DCU Virtual Open Days, true or false? The DCU Virtual Open Days are taking place November 20th and 21st. True, and make sure you attend if you are looking at this. They are going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> number two, uh, a, a multi-purpose brand new sports all-weather pitch is just finished, but which campus, which campus is it located on? Due to Owen Crossan constantly bringing this up, I know it is on St. Pat's, St. Patrick's Drum Contra. <laughs> we do have a brand new all uh, weather pitch just finished. I believe it's opening uh, very, very soon. So that's there on our St. Pat's Drum Contra campus. We also have a sport, dedicated sports campus, which is a total different conversation. Uh, <laughs> last uh, and not least, you're on two out of three. I just want to remind you, Maeve did get three. So this is a big one. Um, DCU became a university in 1989. But before that, um, it was known as NIHE. What does NIHE stand for? On a friend now. No, but you can take your time. But if I see you on Google, you're the squad. <laughs> uh, NIHE. Yeah, so just make National give you a few. Institute. What would, H what would HE stand for now around your clubs and sock circles? Jeez, H -E, H -E, higher education. Very National good. Institute of Higher Education. We'll give you a half a point. So that's that's two and a half out of five. You is took, that what it is? No, no, it is. But you took very long, to be fair. Ah, you saw my hands are here. I couldn't have even googled it. <laughs> okay, well, Maeve's not watching, but I can't see her on the list here. So uh, look, we'll give you three out of three. If there is, uh, <laughs> if there is no last minute questions, I'll just give a few more seconds, just in case there is. Just to remind people, we hear, we are here all the time, studenthelp at dcu.e. There's loads of ways of getting in touch after we finish today. So don't uh, worry if you have a question or think of one tomorrow or next week. We're always here to help. Uh, I enjoyed that, Roy. Did you enjoy it? I had a great time, Johnny. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. <laughs> you always bring uh, the, the life to the party, and despite your technical mishap at the start, but um, we'll, we'll forgive it you. It wouldn't be me without it, really. I don't think I've ever had a seamless video call yet. <laughs> <laughs> We can edit it out in the recording. Just a reminder, this will go up as a recording online, so you can watch back if you feel like watching back or for those that are obviously not here joining us. Um, that just leaves me to say thank you. Uh, thanks for your time. Uh, we hopefully will see you soon and stay safe. And uh, thank you for all the, the information you gave us. Yeah, you too. It was fun to have. It was fun to be on. I enjoy talking about, obviously, me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, and we will speak to you soon. Thanks, Roy. No worries. Thanks, Johnny. See you. Thanks.
Uh, just before I go, just to remind people that these, as I said, will go up online. We have so much other information online right now at the moment. We have social media takeovers that happen uh, three times a week. We have these live conversations every Wednesday. We have an online interactive uh, prospectus. You have your academic um, course presentations. You have taster lectures and so much more, which I am failing to remember at a five o'clock on Wednesday. It just leaves me to say thank you for joining us today. I hope you found it beneficial. You will get us at student help at DCU ie anytime if you think of a question you want a bit of help you want a bit of direction and uh, myself uh, johnny cooper and my colleagues are here to help uh, thank you stay safe and we'll speak to everybody really really soon